first uh, I was looking at the we have a freaking with two and a bee uh, flew and got on my hair so it was underneath the layers of hair and I could just feel it like busting around and I just like uh can somebody get this off I think I have a bee in my hair and they just like and it just flew out I love honey also are very important and like not in just the way from a beehive. People, some people think that like, you know, getting honey from a bee is like, you know, But really it's not. Bees have always made an excess honey. Why bears are around, one of the reasons. Like they are the only time that they don't make excess honey is before winter. For thousands of years, they people like a thousand years, people have gotten honey. She started a garden in someone's backyard, but before that she was an activist and she was arrested for civil disobedience and she demonstrated and protested against the war and she demonstrated and protested against human trafficking and she was an anti-poverty activist and she decided that she wanted to do something constructive and positive for a change and so she started this garden in someone's backyard in the North Valley and that was almost 20 years ago. And now we have 60 member families for CSA. And we do a farm camp program for kids in the summer. And we have a free and low cost workshops on the farm and lots of opportunities for people to volunteer and learn how to garden and how to farm. Most farmers nowadays are over the age of, of 50, so the importance is to bring up that next generation of farmers to feed the world. I work on Fridays with the farm and uh, help distribute the produce. We harvest it from the field, we wash it, we pack it, and we send it to 60 families in the valley. It's fun because there's animals and children and um, sometimes there's goats, we get to milk them sometimes. I think sometimes also if that's with farm camp or I've done it before, sort of gardens and make uh, ice cream with uh, goat milk and it is good and it's like yum yum. And it actually tastes like ice cream from cows, like dairy ice cream. It doesn't taste like I do two different things with Erda. Uh, I'm a work trader, so I harvest on Fridays. And I do um, it's been everything that I ever hoped for out of a CSA and a community and the food. The food is great. My family and I have never eaten better. It's been a real wonderful uh, community building um, uh, opportunity for us. And I really enjoy the, um, the nonprofit status that our organization has because we were able to do outreach in our immediate community. Goat farm, and I heard about Erda. Um, I heard that at one point Erda had. Um, had some goats, and so I was really interested in living in the city and also um, doing stuff with goats. And so I found out that Erda had, at one point, had worked with goats, and I heard that there were some really great people with Erda. Um, and I really wanted to be farming in the city, and I wanted to be in the South Valley, and I work in the South Valley too. So, um, and I wanted to live down here, and so Erda just seemed like a really good fit. Farm camp, and now there's several farms in Albuquerque area that have farm camps. 
And I feel like a lot of times that Erna is a leader in the community. We were the first CFA in Albuquerque. We are the first farm to openly offer programs for kids on our farm. And now we're trying to purchase our main garden location. That's what this campaign is really about right now. And hopefully we'll be the first community farm to buy our land and then several more will follow. And that just means that more, more people in the community will be ensured access to local healthy food in the future. And I think you should go there because you show you have plants and how you can take care of them. And maybe even sometimes they let you um, go, um, get garlic from camp because, um, well, you learn lots of stuff that um, you can um, do, like um, plant and My, my wife and daughter and I grew pumpkins and squash. The first time that we got to go to that field and start to see the, the sprouts coming up and the accomplishment that, and the hope that we were going to have a successful season of that year. and learning center because I believe that a better world than the world that we live in now is possible um, and it's going to come through collaboration, through uh, a, a redefinition of competition and uh, it's going to come with my neighbors. I, I think that the world as we are occupying it now, uh, can't survive this occupation. And Erda represents sustainable ways um, and experimental ways and exciting opportunities to live with respect for myself, for my neighbors, um, and for my neighbors of all kinds. Not only that is the pace of things very different, um, the magic of the farm is really different. Um, it's more integration with everything, species and people. The community uh, community gardens they're they're absolutely essential uh, in terms of making a sub substantial impact in people being able to self empower themselves. The farm is it's a connection to a long lineage of heritage. You know, our, our landscape and our farming landscape is is what connects us as humans to the natural world. And, in the, in the sense that, you know, we are we are part of it, we're co-creators of that process, but I think it's very, very important and it's very healing also. So I'm from Erda Gardens because I believe strongly in uh, public food source and connecting people, especially children, to uh, learning about where their food comes from. Pretty awesome place. Great people there. And great community. They do a lot of great things.
my grandson really loves going there. And what was really cool this summer was farm camp kids, and we went out to the orchard and did some really fun stuff. And uh, it was just an awesome place. There's things I like to do with my life, and Erda is one of them, helping them uh, get land and procure land and have a permanent home. And once we do get uh, land under Erda's name, there's some amazing things that can happen. Uh, we can think more about the future and uh, do things that uh, are really important to uh, our mother Earth. participando de, de ser parte como como sembrar como cosechar saber dónde viene cada cada alimento que llevamos a nuestra mesa When you start, the hardest part is starting. It doesn't take a lot of land. It doesn't take a whole lot of time and a whole lot of effort to put a few seeds in the ground. You plant those first few and you will fall in love with it from there. As the global warming comes to Albuquerque, we have to figure out how we're going to grow food. We have to figure out where we're going to get our food from. And that's what the Berta Gardens is getting ready to do. It's, it's a garden for the, for the future. We will be able to actually be the first CSA in Albuquerque to purchase our land and to, and to preserve this, um, this agricultural Many more families will be able to benefit from Urda for generations. Oh, wow.